Hello, 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 and welcome to this week's episode of Futon Talks. I am your host, Christopher Midland, joined as always by my homer, Joshua Castro. Oh no, this is already off to an awful start. Homer? You named the dog Homer? Yeah, that's the only good one. Blue is the only good name. No, Blue is a terrible name. I'm going to look up the stats here. Blue's see. Clues. I'm going to see how many people named the dog Homer. Have some originality. Why are you going for Blue's Clues? Homer is a perfect name for a dog Original, wearing a straw you got hat. Simpsons is the most famous TV show of all time, and the main character is named Homer. Come on, Blue is, yeah, Blue but is he's a good not name a for dog. a dog. He pretty he's much is. He's almost a dog. <laughs> is he a human even? <laughs> In, sorry, I'm Googling this. That's okay. While you Google, I'll uh, address the audience. Um, today, we are talking about Kentucky Route Zero, The Artful Escape, and pretty much every Annapurna game we've played, um, which is actually a lot for some reason. We uh, we really like them. Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes. Um, and uh, before... You continue listening, why don't you hit subscribe if you haven't already, like, write a comment, I don't know, do whatever you want. Um, but Josh, yeah, you named the dog Baloo? Yeah, and I did a Google search, and it seems like 100% of everyone named the dog Blue, and nobody named it Homer, so... Well, that statistic is wrong, because obviously <laughs> I named the dog Homer, and that's not 100%. Well, I don't think it counted you, because obviously no one ever named the dog Homer, so... I don't know, did, did you get the platinum? I did not, because I don't want to kill myself. I don't well, want the go. pain. For, before we even start, <laughs> number, okay, so should we give our three words, and then I want to ask you what it was like getting sure. the platinum. Sure, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm doing this off the top of my head, okay? Um, evocative. This game made me feel things, and sometimes I didn't even know why I was feel, feeling things. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, I want to say this now so I don't forget to say it. So, sorry. Classic me. My three words are going to take forever. But when I worked for... I, I worked as a dental assistant for a while. And in the bathroom, there was a poetry book by Khalil Hibron. Or Khalil Gibron. I don't know how it's said. But it's called The Prophet. And it was, I suppose, like modern poetry, you know, so it's not like it like rhymes or anything. It's not like what you'd read in school a lot of the time. And these poems would be like a page or two long, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. And I remember reading it and I would like, at first I I just happened to like read it because I wanted to read something while going to the bathroom or just while sitting in there for a moment or while passing by or while on break, you know, and the book, I would just like feel so emotional when I finished a poem, but I like almost never like understood why. And sometimes I've found, and I felt that way with some paintings too, where like, I'm not educated enough to understand why it's evoking this response from me, but Mm -hmm. I can tell that it's something great. And that greatness is pulling something out of me, you know? And so mm-hmm. when I say evocative, that's kind of what I'm referring to, where it has this quality, and I don't think this is for everybody, but I know for me it does, where it communicates with something in me to evoke true emotion, you know. Um, then on the opposite side of the spectrum, I would say Lynchian. If you've like watched, um, you know, something with by David Lynch, uh, like mm-hmm. Twin Peaks is his most famous thing. Sometimes it's just so far up its own like but that it's just annoying and it's like do you need to be this way why are you this way you know it's not as bad as lynch but at times it reminded me of him so like evocative lynchian and then i would say resonant because overall despite the lynchian kind of artsy fartsy art house nature which sometimes i like sometimes i don't despite all that and despite it being a little too long um it's still resonated with me on a way that I found to be profound in a way that most games don't, even games that I think are remarkable for their storytelling. So Mm -hmm. that was long-winded, but so is this game. So it's perfect. Now, what do you think? What are your three words? I have a feeling you're not as hot on it as I am. It's just the vibe I get. I'm not. Um, I have novel, purgatory, 
and surreal. Great um, words. <laughs> is a surreal story. Um, a lot of surrealism going on with the images and with the direction. But yeah, this game uh, is novel. It is. I haven't played anything like it, really. Um, but if yeah. you know me, I'm really not a fan of Playwright. And that's what this game is for 20 hours. I didn't know that. <laughs> you don't of... like, you hate plays. I don't hate plays, but I like, I'm, I'm not one to go watch a play. And I definitely don't want to read a play for 20 hours. Interesting. Um, I liked that about it. That's wild. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's long-winded. It's lynching. It's a little pretentious in a way, if I can call it that. Um, I know some people get mad when you call something pretentious because then it makes you look pretentious. But <laughs> That's true. Are there any? Is there anything more pretentious than saying something is pretentious? I don't think so. No. Um, but yeah, I, I will say I love the first two chapters and two interludes very much. Um, and I kind of thought I knew where the game was going after the first chapter or before the first chapter ended. Um, and then it started going to wild places. And I was like, oh. <laughs> like, we'll talk about chapter four, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> I, um, but no, this, this game actually is, I know, that the, let me say this. I know the game is really good, but it's not for me. I understand. I know the game is like really, really good, but it's not for me. I, um, I, sorry to add to that. I, I agree with you, and for me, mm -hmm. but it's like I feel like I've played this game at the wrong time in my life. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, me too. Like, yeah, for sure. I think because when a a game for a game to really like freaking impact your life, I think this goes for any art form. I think it needs to show up when you're ready for it, right? Or when mm -hmm. the circumstances are right. Like, I think the Outer Wilds hit me at the time that was just perfectly right. Same thing with What Remains of Edith Finch. Um, not the Pathless. I think I would have liked the Pathless more if I played it at a different time in life too. But mm -hmm. like The Last of Us, when I played that, it was perfect timing. And I, I get the feeling that if I'd played this game either when I was younger or maybe just when I wasn't, so addicted to apex <laughs> that i would like it more you know because mm -hmm. it's hard to play this game it's almost like reading the road or something where it's not like dark in that way it is a little dark but it's nothing like the road it's just that it takes something from you and if you don't mm -hmm. want to give it then i'm not sure it's a great experience so you got to have that that personal context i don't know if any of that made sense but no yeah it, it took my time and i didn't want it to a lot of time i was expecting a shorter game <laughs> yeah people say this is 10 hours this game is like 20 hours right am yeah. i crazy no it's like sure. a 20, 20 hour game hours. it feels that way that's for sure i i think a good thing to keep in mind as we critique it and as we just talk about it is also that this game was released in ep like episodically over the case of seven years mm -hmm. or over the course yeah. of seven years so like Maybe it would have been better if I'd played an act every year, even though it would have been impossible to keep track of that way. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, I don't know. A little too long for my taste. Yeah, especially when you're just reading. So it's like reading a book. It really is. It is like reading a book. Um. Uh, I think, I guess, we, should we just go, like, what's the general gist of the game? Um, yeah, yeah. It's basically you follow Conway, who's the truck driver who has become a slave to corporations. And yes. he's on his final, his final delivery. And he uh, has to get to the zero, which is a highway. Um, but no one seems to know what the zero is or they don't want to talk about it. Um, you run into certain characters and eventually those characters become the main character in a weird way, like Junebug and Johnny and, uh, and Ezra Marquez and Shannon 
Or Kaz. Yes. Hmm. Marquez. Oh, Marquez. Yeah, Chan Shan. Marquez. That's how you say her name. Yes. yes. Marquez. Yeah. Yeah, Shannon. What time um, be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but you, uh, yeah, you start finding that these other characters are becoming the focal point, and then Conway starts drifting off back into his old ways. Like, he's ready for retirement, but he is pulled into another job through debt. Um, and this game is just this giant odyssey of anti-corporations being slaves to corporations, um, finding community and then losing community and what happens when you lose it. And basically the, at least what I got out of it, when you lose community, you, you basically die. Yes. (laughs) You lose yourself. Um, I will say, in the first chapter, I thought I nailed this game. I thought I knew exactly what it was going to be. Um, but maybe they intended for that. Where after you leave a, a Quis gas station, um, you can follow Route 66 or 65 or whatever it is. And you can find the truck accident that happened. Mm. And I swore that Conway was dead like that was me going back to where I died and the rest of the game is basically purgatory finding all the people that you've met in your life and you know mending relationships and righting wrongs but I was wrong I'd be too happy it needs you need to sprinkle in some more anti-capitalism and then I think you've got it yeah you're right (laughs) um but yeah, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have played this right after Edith Finch because one of the stories is basically being a slave to routine, which is, I guess you can call it a job, mm-hmm. which then goes to corporations. But So I didn't get any emotional pull out of that. Um, but yeah, I think that's the story. And then the end, community makes everything better. Right, that, that's the ending. You uh, you make your own family, sort of. Yeah, yeah. It is the, you know, the ending is pretty ambiguous, you know, because there's not like a good ending or a bad ending. In the end, the only thing you can really affect is who stays to rebuild the town with no roads, right? Hmm. Um. But yeah, quickly before we go into that, I mean, would you recommend people play this game? No, I would never recommend this game to anybody. <laughs> Sadly, I wouldn't. It's too obtuse, I think, for me to recommend anybody. It's a hard recommend. Like the people I know. Yeah, like, who, who could I recommend this to? <laughs> like the only person I could think of is like maybe my sister, but... Oh, I think your sister would love this game. <laughs> I think she might, but like even then, like just it's so winding. And I think it's a little hard to play. It's a little hard to follow sometimes too. I I took like a week the symbolisms. off. Symbolisms. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's crazy and and absurdist and surreal. And I took a week off when I told you to play the game to like let you catch up, so I didn't like finish it way too ahead. And then you caught it very fast. But I took a whole week off between like Act Three and Act Four. When mm-hmm. I got back, I had no idea what was happening. Like I lost <laughs> all track. <laughs> what was going on like suddenly he didn't have an arm now and it doesn't explain that that just kind of happens and you have to notice it but Mm -hmm. yeah it's it is a very hard to grasp game like it it takes something from you you know yeah uh not a fun game it is funny at times i i think the writing is is quite good Mm mm-hmm and I think they did a cool job with, like, who's your favorite character? Who did you like? Who did you not like? Mm, I love, like, it's a funny thing. I don't, I can't recommend the game. I didn't really have fun playing the game, but I loved all the characters in the game. Me too. Um, <laughs> Same. It's pretty I similar love, experience. Uh, like, Conway and Homer, obviously. Conway and Blue. Um Shannon was pretty good. I started to see the trend that Shannon was just the way to progress the story. Mm-hmm. Um, she seemed like the only one who like was an anchor for the group. Yeah, she's like the straight man almost. Yeah. So 
I used her dialogue a lot, but I don't know if I necessarily liked her a lot. Junebug was all right. I think Johnny and Ezra were my favorite duo. I love Johnny. Um, I think Johnny's my favorite. Yeah, the Ro- <laughs> robot man. We never. I guess. <laughs> spoiler alert. I don't know. No one's going to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> And if you haven't um, played this game and you're listening to this, I'm sorry because you're just gonna be so confused. Like <laughs> this game is, you don't, yeah. Um, but yeah, Johnny and Junebug, the two robots that you find on the road. Um, but yeah, I I'm trying to think of any other characters I might miss. I, uh, big ones. I, I mean, I think it's the crew. You know, I think you're right. It's Johnny, Junebug, yeah. Ezra, Conway, Shannon. And then Clara, mm-hmm. like, really sticks around for some reason at the end. Clara. Yeah, Clara was a weird one that just followed you. I was like, oh. Oh, and then, but there's um, the uh, the the bedsheets band or whatever. The Oh, Emily and Bob Ron. and Ben or whatever. Yeah, Bob and Ben. They're, like, every interlude. And they're in the beginning yeah. of the game and every act. I liked I liked them. I thought they were cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah, probably Conway, Homer, and then Ezra and Johnny. Two were hopeful, two were definitely like a tragedy. Um, really sad. Which reminds And you don't really Oh sorry. I was just gonna say Oh You go. <laughs> no. I, was, I like that you called it a tragedy for, for those two characters. I thought it was a good opening when he's at the Equus gas station and he goes downstairs and Bob I think it's Bob Ben and Emily, I don't know their names. But those three are arguing while they're playing like D&D or something. And they lose the dice and you have to find it. But as they're talking, you hear one of them say to the others, guys, I don't think we can win this game. It says it's a tragedy. And I think Mm -hmm. it was just a really good tone setter. And it really is true for Conway, right? There is no winning his story. It's a tragedy. Mm -hmm. You know? Anyway, there's a couple moments that I think are really great with with Conway and it being a tragedy and, you know, the inevitability of his, his fate. But anyway, sorry, what were you saying? Oh, I was basically basically going to say that. Um, oh, dang. I have my volume way too up on my headphones. It's definitely going to pick up on the mic. Um, but, yeah, I was basically going to say that you have no choice in what happens with Conway. Um, and that part I really liked. Mm-hmm, me too. Like, it makes you think you have choices, and when uh, the option comes up where do you leave, where you pick the skull for the, you stick with the skeletons, no matter what, he stays. Um, actually, I don't know what happens if you choose to stay. They, I think you just still go. Because it's, like, oh, okay. it's like when they offer him a drink. There's the button to drink, mm-hmm. but if you don't press it, Conway just drinks. He drinks anyways, yeah. And it's because that's what he was going to do, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the things I like about this game being a play. You are there, but when you click conversation options, it's almost like you're choosing what to listen to, not what to say. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, that's a good point. Like you're watching these people in their play doing what they're doing. It's almost like you're an observer in a way that I think mm-hmm. is a lot more... Um, prominent than in other like movie games like Until Dawn or Detroit or you know whatever game you choose so it's kind of fascinating that way yeah yeah I don't like (laughs) this is a hard game to talk about I think it is Um, too I mean is there were there any moments that you really enjoyed any acts that you liked yeah the first two I really enjoyed um but I don't know if it's because I enjoyed what it was or what I thought it was. Mm. You know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, Act Four is such a slog, dude. It's, it's so very long. long. Um, and the interludes I stop caring for after the entertainment. I loved the entertainment though. That one was really cool. That was really good. Um. For those who haven't played it, the entertainment is basically you are an audience member in a play, but I, I, I don't even know how to explain it really. It's like you are, you're an audience member, but you, you are also in the play. You're like a, 
what's the what's it called? You're like an extra. You're a fly almost. on the wall. Yeah, you're literally yeah. called the bar fly because you're literally just sitting there drinking while this play happens around you, essentially. Mm-hmm. And it's I think yeah. I think that interlude's really awesome because you see all of these things that are happening in this thing, and it's like a play, but it's also a play that's from the zero. So then yeah. in the next act, you go to that bar and you talk to the guy who owns the bar and the people have already, I can explain the story there in a second, but the mm-hmm. aftermath of what happened in the interlude has happened in real life. And you find the people who were in debt at the hard times whiskey and you, you know, so it's just, it's wild. Yeah. It's like a really cool semi meta. I don't know if it's really meta, but it's like a really cool foreshadowing, which you think is just thematic, but then you go and you're like, oh crap, this freaking happened, you know? Mm-hmm. And they do that a lot with interludes, like the flood one, where you've heard about this flood taking out WV- EVP TV forever. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really think about it at the time, but slowly the weather starts getting bad as you're doing a broadcast, and then eventually the flood comes and it like destroys everything. Yeah. I thought that was pretty, because it's kind of the opposite. You know, and the entertainment, it's preparing you to recognize something in the future. Whereas Mm -hmm. that last interlude, you've been prepared to learn about something from the past and then you go experience it. And I thought both Mm -hmm. of those were really, really effective. And those were my two favorite interludes, I think. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, Yeah, I I have a, a favorite quote. Ooh. Um, I forgot who said this. I want to say it was Shannon or Junebug. It, it's fitting um, that you don't remember, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we must always take the dying at their word. Their motivations are beyond our understanding. I thought that was really good. I like that. It makes sense. I feel like. Oh, and then someone called uh, the group a, ga- a glass elephant, which I thought was also interesting. interesting. No, I, I don't know what I, I... This is the kind of game where I know I should remember quotes, but all I remember is, like, a vibe, which is also kind of... The feel, yeah, the feeling of playing the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not a fun game. It's a hard game to get through. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's really good. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't know. Do we uh, move on from here? Do we... Yeah, I think let's compare some Annapurna games we've played recently, like The Artful Escape, which we're not going to do a full episode on. Let's compare yeah. like that to Kentucky Route Zero, and like which is which is better, but like which has more meaning. How did you feel about The Artful Escape? Because we haven't talked about it. Yeah, you recommended it to me uh, after last episode, I think, mm-hmm. which was about two weeks ago. I think. I don't know. I think it was. Yeah, it was like. Um, I got the platinum twice. Um, I will say the PS4 version is better. Oh. I actually had some glitches with the PS5 version. Oh no. Um, the Artful Escape. Compared to Kentucky Route Zero, it's skin deep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> and actually, it might be my least favorite Annapurna game I've played. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> um, I felt like I was in a early 2000s indie music video the whole time, which is not a vibe that I like. The aesthetic is interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very indie, very hipster. <clears throat> but I, yes. I like it. I don't love it, but I, I like it. Yeah, I like it. I uh I especially like the first area before you go off into space. Spoiler alert. Yeah, I think yeah, spoiler um, alert. I think the space part is the weakest part. I like the the beginning by far the most. Yeah, the beginning is by far the best and I felt like the music in the beginning was far better cuz you were you were asking me like, "Oh, maybe I'm not hearing it right with music and it sounds the same for most of the game absolutely okay good (laughs) i think it changes the song once or twice 
but the latter quarter of the game is the same song as the first quarter or the first third it's very same it kind of just combines them all um and i almost got teary-eyed with the music in the beginning because i thought it was perfect it was so well executed with what i was inputting and what was going on in the game Mm -hmm. um the beginning has a very nice string section and it was a very powerful moment like oh i'm i'm leaving my old life to start anew and that was really cool um but then yeah you go into space and it's all this bs i you just uh, it all just sounds the same <laughs> it all just sounds the same and you get these weird monsters and it like is it's almost like a worse version of Rayman Legends. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know? <laughs> yeah. The pain. And I don't like Rayman Legends. <laughs> Does anyone like Rayman Legends? Is that a, is that a oh, game they're, people they're like? out there. There's some Rayman out there. Yeah, but tell me how you feel about the Artful Escape. So, some games don't need gameplay to be good. Mm-hmm. Such as Kentucky Route Zero. Um, I can't say you to Finch because I think that it has great gameplay. Um, but, you know, you got other games that are kind of like Kentucky Route Zero, like all the movie games, you know, and just other simple games where, like, gameplay is not that important. But I think mm-hmm. that if you're going to make a game where, you're, like, you have to play music, you know, and you got to feel like a really, like, good music musician... You know, I feel like it was too simple when it came to like the music sections. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was I was actually a little uh, upset that different buttons didn't do different things. I agree. I was I get that they were catering to like the lowest denominator, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. of like people that really just wanted to. But I feel like I wish there was like a simple play mode and a mode that really it was more like Guitar Hero or, or something like where you could. Yeah, it'd be a little more complicated. You're able to express yourself very much. Yeah, it, it, I found it confusing and limiting a lot of the time. And mm-hmm. I don't know, that might have been because there was not a lot to do with the song, because there was one song for the whole game. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, other than that, I was fine. I think there should have been a lot less running around once you got to space. I found myself just waiting to get to the next alien. Yeah, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I thought it was just a little, a little too long in general. Definitely too long with the runs between the aliens, and then I thought it was a little too simple. But yeah, and then I don't know. The story was fine. I didn't hate it, but I also didn't love it. I don't mm-hmm. think you needed to go on a space odyssey to like figure these things out. But it was an interesting setting, so I'm not like angry about it. But yeah. But how closely does that align to what you thought about it? Like, what do you think oh, yeah, of that? Spot on, brother. Um, spot on, spacefaring voyager. I uh, yeah, I started hating the vibe of that game the more I played it. Um, it's a little too hipster, a little too self-aware at times. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually liking the, definitely liking the music from the uncle a lot more. <laughs> at least it all sounded different, <laughs> so yeah. at least it was distinct, you know. And uh, I think they let you customize your character too far into the game. Yeah, it's like 75% of the game, suddenly I can customize my character. Why even bother? And then you, yeah, and then you ob- then you just you kind of immediately go back in a way. Mm -hmm. Um, I did. A part of me liked that it really happened. A part of me didn't like that. Oh, like that it was all real. Yeah. I almost feel like it. I wish it was more internal that he was changing and he was bettering himself and being uh, more open and out there. But he actually had to physically go through this extraterrestrial adventure 
Um, I, but that's I just agree. me. It's the same thing with uh, Kentucky Route Zero. I just went to I went straight to everyone's dead. <laughs> it's just <laughs> a know, nice Shyamalan. Very common it. trope. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wish the same uh, thing though, because like I don't love that it's like his his uncle went through it too, or was it his dad? Yeah, no, his uncle uh, went through the same space odyssey. <laughs> so to me, it's just like why, <laughs> like, yeah. um. Yeah, I kind of wish he just had this, like, internal journey where he, like, realized it was cool to be himself. Like, woo, what a freaking special message. But I just, I feel like he didn't need outer space to tell him that. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel, yeah. I feel like they had all these drawings, and they were like, let's make a game where we can use these yeah. weird drawings that we made. And then they mm-hmm. built a game out of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure, yeah. It makes sense. It's just, um, uh, I like how both games actually have a sort of similar time period vibe, like very fifties, you know, Mad Men. Um, poetry is everywhere, and folk music, and mm-hmm. um, I'm forgetting the word, like the names for the time period and the style, but no, it's got that very like Americana vibe. Yeah, and. Big question, though. Artful Escape, mm. a game that's all about music versus Kentucky Route Zero. Uh, Kentucky Route Zero has way better music, though, in my personal yeah. opinion. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, the vibe is there. That's a huge part of why I really liked Kentucky Route Zero. It was not afraid to just plop you down and make you watch a song play. Mm-hmm. And it worked because the atmosphere and the song were perfect. I mean, the Junebug song, oh, my gosh, it was freaking great. The hymn at the end with the when the neighbors are dead, the horses, so good. The hymn at Sam and Ida's, so good. A lot of hymns. But I, I really, really enjoyed the music in this game. Just thought it was awesome. Um I will say I did not necessarily enjoy the Junebug song, but the other songs I did enjoy. Crazy. The song's great. Um, I'm gonna make it the intro. I don't know if I liked <laughs> my op like the choices I made in some of the lyrics. Mm. Um but I will say I did really enjoy choosing the poems. Do you have Do you have any recollection of what your first poem was when you put the in the computer, kind or at of. least like kind of like what it was? I think it was something like the stars are above us, the road something, and then another thing. Mm. I don't know if that's even correct at all, but that's kind of what I remember. I think mine was I'm. I'm at the beginning of the game, um, but I'm not going to play it right now. <laughs> Just turn around. Um, I feel like mine was, I listened to him speak. It's late. It's only going to get later. Ooh. Something like that. I like that. Mm-hmm. It's only going to get later. Yes, this Kentucky Route Zero is much better. Um, <laughs> but like, I would if, definitely recommend Artful Escape faster. Then I would recommend Kentucky Route Zero, even though I don't like Artful Escape nearly as much as I like Kentucky Route Zero. I don't think I would recommend either of these games just for different reasons. I mean, you're right. I really wouldn't. I mean, I did <laughs> recommend Artful Escape to you, obviously. Yeah, you did. So I have to say I would recommend it. You're terrible friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's just such a mediocre game, in my opinion. In in the greater pantheon of like annapurna games people love that game too i know and this is the thing i really do like the first two hours i think the first two hours are great because it's funny it's witty the music's cool it's an interesting story and then it just goes off the rails and i think it fails that way Mm -hmm. so like yeah but i know it has actually a sort of too simple at times and then there's too many gameplay things going on with the boss fights where I'm like, you're, you you don't do this. This is what this game is. Yeah. You're making me w- run from one side of the screen to the next to do the same thing. Five slide times. Slide power slam thing. Like, I think it um, needed to be either less complicated or more complicated. Like it needed to choose. It was just in the middle where it was this blase kind of vanilla nothingness. But now yeah. that we've talked about two games we wouldn't recommend. What are two games you would recommend? 
Or just what games do you really like? Like, what games do you think succeed more than this when it comes to Annapurna? To remind everybody, we've played Stray, Chris has played Gone Home, we played What Remains of Edith Finch, The Pathless, um, Outer Wilds. Neither of us have played the Eye expansion, which I really want to. But, yeah, I'm probably missing a couple. Journey, Flower. Mm -hmm. um, But those are my cat. I've played my cat. He hasn't. Uh, I think that's everything, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, we just talked about Stray. How does the how do these compare to Stray? Uh, Stray is smack dab in the middle, I think. Between these two games, or in the, the mm-hmm. overall? Yeah, just I think actually overall is actually a good place for Stray. Stray is not as good as it should be. Stray in the middle. Straight in the middle. Yeah, I think. But would you agree? Strays is like the most mediocre of all Annapurna games that we've played. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's not it's not bad, you know. I just and it's beautiful. I just feel like for some reason, I'm like it definitely isn't better than Kentucky Route Zero it, in my personal opinion. I mean, but I'd be much faster to recommend Stray because you play as a cat. It's just so novel. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, I agree. It's just it's kind of mediocrity embodied when it comes to. To end up in this like stable of games. Um, recommendations. I'll I'll go. I think you have to do it in two ways. You have to do it in introducing someone to Annapurna, and then for the hardcore Annapurna people. Yes. In a way, so I would start with Edith Finch and Journey. Those, I think, would be the two perfect starters. You got one that's very simple and um, kind of puzzly, and then you got another one that is an incredible experience that will just hook you right in. Um, and you can, I guess, interchange those if that's you want. That's true. <laughs> um, but the more advanced level, the higher tier. For the more advanced You have to go gamer. Outer Wilds and probably Kentucky Route Zero. Ooh. Two very different games, but two, two very different games, but very similar in how intense they are. Yes, and how this is, <laughs> I just actually figured out there's more reading in the <laughs> in the you higher got, levels. You got of baby Annapurna, games and you got reading. literate games. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you want to read or not? That, those are there, two. There options. is a ton of reading in our wilds. So I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it's literally like a text adventure that you move in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man, I tend to mostly agree because I think you said it really well in that Kentucky Route Zero is a game I would not recommend, but not because it's bad. It's because I don't have people that I would recommend it to, but like to someone mm-hmm. who's really into. In a Perna games, I think it's a it's a definite recommend because I think it is a good game. Yeah. Um, I think the Pathless deserves a spot too. We were hard on the Pathless, um, because that was a really stupid ending. <laughs> but person, according to me, but I think yeah. the Pathless is great yeah, as long as bad. you turn off all subtitles and <laughs> make yeah, it. Yeah, you can put it in a language you don't understand is probably really good. Yeah, make it it's German, like perfect or something, whatever you want. I don't care. Um. I think it's it's very cool, very beautiful. What a great flow game. But it's probably more towards the mid as well. It's better than Stray, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Just because it's cool and you can do so much, you know. From a gameplay perspective, I think it's pretty pretty competent. Maquette is not good. It is fine. It is whatever. Mm-hmm. And then other than that, I totally agree with you. I think Outer Wilds, Kentucky Route Zero, those are my... You know, for more advanced gamers, Edith Finch and um, more sophisticated, more sophisticated gamers for the pretentious of you. Yeah, the ones who wear black turtlenecks and green jackets. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess a final question about the overall Annapurna label: What's your favorite Annapurna game, and why is it The Outer Wilds? I'm just kidding. I know it's Edith Finch, or it's Journey. You love Journey. This is a really hard question. You won't even play Journey again because you your experience with it was so profound. Yeah. Hmm. 
Um, yeah, it would have to be between Outer Wilds and Journey. Um, Ooh. I can't choose between those two. Um, man, I can't choose. Interesting. I didn't realize that you uh, liked Outer Wilds that much. Mm-hmm. For some reason, I always got the vibe you didn't like it as much as I did. Mm. Thought I was wrong. Apparently. For me, it's definitely yeah. Outer Wilds. I think the Outer Wilds is the best game ever made. If Journey didn't exist, it would be Outer Wilds. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, everyone out there, if, you've, if you haven't heard it before, you're hearing it again, go play the Outer Wilds. If you have Kentucky Route Zero, uninstall it so you can make more room for Outer Wilds to breathe. It is right. so good. For the DLC. That's true, which we need to play. We should make that. We should put that on our list so we actually do it. Before it's That's too true. late. Yeah, the PS5 version comes out pretty soon, actually. That's right. I think it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. But man, I just, I just gotta say, I don't know what happened to the Edith Finch, but the PS5 version looks a lot better. Like I don't, I that I don't know if that's true. It might be exactly the same, but it is a much better experience to play on PS5. I'll have to play it again. I there's a group of friends that my wife and I hang out with a lot. And I don't know if they've ever played it. And if they haven't, then I'll I'll make them play it on PS5. Yeah, I got the Platinum in three hours or less. Wow, that's fast. Super fast game. That's how fast right. games should be, game developers. Four hours, five yeah. hours max. You know, this 20-hour crap with lies about it being 10 hours. Oh, my gosh. Maybe they didn't calculate the interludes. Do you think that's what it was? They did not add... Because some of the interludes were like an hour long. Yeah, they were. And the checkpoints I don't are know. really inconvenient. Like I I was doing like the claw machine with Ezra and Johnny at the top of Sam and Ida's. Um and I stopped the game and I came back mm-hmm. and it went all the way back to the part where Sam is like slowly walking up the stairs while talking to the fish. It takes like five yes. minutes for him to get up the stairs, and then my game crashed and I had to do it again. So I mm-hmm. hate him. I hate the fish. <laughs> yeah, I don't know because you didn't get the platinum. Did you do the Tuesday trophy? I don't. What is that? That scares me. You have to do the claw and win on a Tuesday. So I <laughs> I made my console offline and changed the date to Tuesday. Um, nice. And did it, but yeah, there's some interesting trophies in the game. Yeah, the only one I got, other than just, like, the normal ones, was finding the organist and the mm. Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I'm such a good explorer. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I feel like I've said everything I want to say about Kentucky Route Zero. Mm-hmm. Um, I've Did s- you do the final interlude where you found Carrington? No. I've I've heard oh, okay. rumors of this. So number one, who's Carrington, and what's the final interlude? Tell me about it. Carrington is one of, um, what's his name? I forget his name. No, oh. he's a friend of the attendant. I forgot his actual name though. Who's also a friend of Lisa, the person at the Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces or whatever. The artist, That's right? Name, right, she's, Lisa. She's an artist. Yes. And she worked, but she also works there and she tells him where Dogwood Drive is and Yeah, the girl in the glasses. Yeah, yeah. Um I think the three of them were used to work together or one of the interludes is like I think the first interlude actually is all about them. Mm, okay. But if you don't talk to Carrington in Act One, you won't be able to do the final interlude which is a conversation between Carrington and the attendant, I think. Oh, okay. And they're like watching TV and they're just talking about the game pretty much and what happened to their relationships. Oh. At least, at least that's what I got out of it. I could have been totally out of it. Mm-hmm. Maybe they were dead the whole time. Maybe. <laughs> their reflections weren't in the TV screen, so it's probably true. Oh, my gosh. Um, But yeah, that's all I got for... Annapurna games. Me too. Kentucky Route Zero. I didn't realize that this whole time while we've been going through 
all the Christopher Nolan movies, all the Batman movies. We were also going through all the Annapurna games without even knowing it. Yeah. Look at us. We can't we can't help it. You're... This whole time we've actually been going through all of the PS4 games. Dude, we are. <laughs> <laughs> we've gone through almost all the PS5 games. Yeah, almost. All five of them. How exciting. Mm-hmm. But uh, Chris, what are our plans for the next couple weeks so that we can disappoint we have everybody? God of War Whoa. 2018. Um, getting ready for Ragnarok. I am more than halfway through. Such a good game. Wow. Everyone should play it. If you have a PlayStation, I'm pretty sure it's free. I feel um, like they just, they just give it to you when you buy a PlayStation. Yeah. That's what it feels like. If you have a PS5, it's free for sure, and then obviously you can get it through Essential or Extra or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, Bloodborne, perhaps. We might be getting to that point. Um, I'm sure we have a movie we can choose soon. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? What do we got on the docket? I want to say while you're looking around, I am sorry in advance to everybody, but I think me playing all the other Dark Souls games... And Elden Ring has made me horrible at Bloodborne because now I can't be Dark Beast Parl and I just rage quit every time I fight him, even though he's the <laughs> easiest boss in the game. So I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I am struggling to get through Bloodborne mm. right now. It's like every time I have to go back to the Hunter's Nightmare in between farming two blood vials, it's like a part of my soul dies. And I wouldn't have to mm. farm blood vials if I wasn't so bad at the game, but I mm-hmm. am now. I don't know what happened. The first time I played this game... Have you summoned anybody yet? I summon every time and I still lose, dude. That's how bad I am. So, like, this is the weird wow. thing. Wow. I don't know. When I first played Bloodborne, I died to a boss, like, a single time. I was on top of the world. So, I don't know what happened between then and now, but I am truly horrible at the game. And I don't. Yeah, I'll just have to help you through. It. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm just I'll, really uh, bad now. So I forget. Is there a uh, like? Oh, you can't summon people this rank. I don't or is that think nothing? so. I think that it's fine. But because if there isn't, I'll just help you get through the whole game. Let's do that. It'd be fun because then we can actually do something play together again. other than this podcast. Because Chris refuses to play Apex Legends. I choose. Not to play. Come over. <laughs> Join me. Come on. You just need to stay long enough that you don't notice it's not Warzone, and then you'll you won't be able to stop yourself. No. <laughs> It'll be like old times. You can't make me. You remember when we were playing so much Warzone that everything in our lives suffered from it? Mm-hmm. It was good times, man. Yeah. Just used to be so angry all the time. <laughs> I've never been so much at peace. I was filled with rage. Not playing a Battle Royale. Dude, it reminds me, you know that meme from Scary Movie? I don't know which one it was, but they were, it's the one where they, they, um, spoof the ring and like the ring girl is there and they like blow a fan on her face and like lights turn on and she was like a happy little girl. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, it's like that when I delete Apex or when I delete Warzone. That's what happens to me. Also, mm-hmm. I accident so Apex is horrible and the servers are trash. So every time you get on, either you get on immediately or you have to like turn off your console, turn it back on, reconnect to the internet. It's horrible. And so I'm in a routine of doing that now. I have to close the game, do a bunch of stuff to make it work when it's not working right away. Mm-hmm. And so yesterday I was going to get on just to like listen to a video while doing it, you know. I think it was about Kentucky Route 0. And I get on and it's not working. So I'm like, okay, I got to close it. So I go down to close it and I delete it by accident. If PS5 doesn't like ask you if you're sure, even when it's like a hundred gigabyte game that it knows will take 10 mm-hmm. hours to download because our internet's bad. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so it's still downloading. Isn't that great? It's awesome. Anyway, little little depressing anecdote from my life. <laughs> but, but that's it anyway well, we're done <laughs> so yeah you have any other things you'd like to leave the uh our amazing audience with chris uh again subscribe like comment share and if you feel so inclined join uh cody Emmett and john on patreon.com slash futon talks 
And technically live. She wanted me to say that. And technically live. Only technically, though. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you guys um, for being yeah, patrons. We love you. But we thank you. We thank the rest of the audience more if they were also patrons. But we love you all regardless. Though we do love our patrons more. I actually don't love the patrons as, as much. I actually love the subscribers more. See, Sorry, guys. That's, that's the good balance we strike here. I love the patrons and hate yeah. the other viewers. Chris hates the patrons <laughs> and loves anyone who I doesn't love subscribe. The, uh, the fleeting listeners, the passerbys. Oh, those who just are taking a trip down the zero. That's right. I think for the the closing audio, I'm just gonna leave a clip I I took of the guy of Will on the phone talking about what to do if you have a snake for sale. Yeah, that's a good one. Did you actually ever call the number? No, but phone. isn't it like the same in real life? Like it's the same, but you could there's a two numbers you can call in the game. You can call the tech support for W E B V or whatever it is. Um and then you can call the the Echo phone line. That's awesome. And it's the same thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'll leave the phone I like, number. I like things like that. I'll leave it on screen so you guys can call and have a conversation with Will. <laughs> the secret, I think it's like the Secret Tourism Bureau or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yes. But uh, we thank you guys for taking this journey down the zero with us. And uh, we hope that you've found your destination, whether it exists or not. And we leave you with that. Have a safe trip. Bye-bye. What's the other party bringing to this here swap? Press 1 if you still plan to go through with the trade. Press 2 if you're having second thoughts.